hey, anyone want to take a shot at what this is? Yeah, I know it says it's a 2021 Honda Ridgeline right there in the title, but it's a lot more than that. This right here, it's a truck for realists. On a balance of wants versus needs, I'm telling you right now, most truck shoppers out there would do just fine in one of these, even if it doesn't top the list of the most desirable models on the market. It also takes some deep pockets to get behind the wheel, but I think it might just be worth the price of admission. For more expert car reviews, don't forget to share our channel and subscribe so you can catch some of this and maybe even a little of that. Doing this week in and week out, you might think my job has become pretty predictable, but it is still capable of surprising me. And this thing is proof. It's not that I ever had a problem with the ridge line. I was just sort of indifferent about it. Well, actually, no, that's not totally true. I wasn't so crazy about the looks of the first gen. That thing was strange, but honestly, I just never really cared one way or another to form an opinion. All that mattered was that I didn't think it was trying to be anything it wasn't, and it was pretty good at being exactly what it was. But then I picked this thing up earlier this week, and almost immediately I realized I really like it. Now, here's the deal. I know people really like to dunk on the Ridgeline because it's not a real truck, but I'm telling you right now, this is more than enough truck for probably 95% of the stuff most people do with their pickups to begin with. Let's be real with each other. And the other thing is, there are a bunch of cool little tricks that make this thing even more practical than it gets credit for, but we'll save those for a little later on. Now for 2021, there are some updates to the Ridgeline, like this new front clip that makes it look less like a pilot with a haircut. and. There's actually a real volume knob in here. Love to see that, but otherwise, it's the same truck as it was before. That means a three and a half liter V6 under the hood, the nine speed automatic transmission Honda put in this thing last year, and a fully automatic all wheel drive system. That means there are no settings to run through. You can't change it up like you can with a four wheel drive truck, but there are some different drive modes that tailor the drivetrain to the conditions. Now, truth be told, I really like it. There's not a whole lot to write home about, but it's more than enough to get the job done, especially in everyday driving. Basically, all the stuff I said about the Pilot last year applies here, and you already watched that review, right? Well, if you didn't, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, add that one to your queue, and watch it after this. But again, it's not exactly exciting as far as the mechanical stuff, but the best part is you never have to worry about what's happening. It just sort of does its thing. This engine makes 280 horsepower and 262 pound-feet of torque, so pretty similar to the V6 in the Toyota Tacoma. Again, it just does what it needs to do. And same with this nine-speed automatic transmission. It doesn't hunt for gears. And then you have that all-wheel drive system as well. Now that does impact the fuel economy. So officially this thing's rated to burn 11 and a half liters per hundred kilometers, which is on par for just about any other mid-sized truck in this segment with a V6 engine under the hood. I do wish it was just a little bit better on gas, but then again, that's part of the trade-off that you get with this all wheel drive system. And the best part is you don't have to worry about changing it on the fly in response to different conditions. It takes care of it on its own, and that is worth that extra fuel you are going to burn. I also wish it was maybe just a little quieter in here, but it's mostly a problem with the tires than anything else, and it's a lot easier to drown that road noise out now that you have an actual volume knob. Honestly, the touch sensor system wasn't working, and I'm so glad to see Honda has finally put a physical control back in here. Now all it needs is a physical tune knob and a more conventional gear selector instead of this push button setup. Yeah, it's one of those things you are gonna get used to over time, but I'm not exactly sure what necessitated the change in the first place. It's not as intuitive as a gear selector on the console or even a column shifter. You know I love those because the thing is, it didn't make any better use of the space on the console. 
if you look at the old T selector that you got on the console, it's exactly the same. I do like this console bin. It's nice and big. But again, I just wish there were maybe some tiers or something just so that you could have a little bit more practical space, kind of like what Honda did with these door pockets. You have multiple levels. I do wish there was just a bit better use of space, but it's not bad. And the same goes with the cabin overall. It does well to utilize the space, especially the second row. There's more room back there than any other truck in this segment. Also under that back bench, there's a full storage area. You lift up either side of that 60-40 split and you can stash your stuff under there. It's only up here that I feel a little bit cramped and honestly it has nothing to do with the cabin width or anything like that. It's the way it's configured. See how stubby this nose is? Yeah, that leads to some issues with legroom up here because these wheel tubs, they really cut into the foot wells. So there's nowhere to stretch your legs out. Not such a problem on the commute to work if it's short, but longer trips, you're definitely going to notice it on the driver's side. This dead pedal is right here, so it just forces my knee to be up. I can't actually stretch my leg out because if I do, it gets jammed behind the brake pedal. And the same goes with the passenger side. I do wish there was just a little bit more space to stretch out up here, but overall, I do like the use of space. Now, there are some obvious size similarities between this thing and the three-row Honda Pilot, but don't forget, they share a whole bunch of parts, including the platform they are built on. But this is the bigger of the two. From bumper to bumper, it's about 14 inches longer, and the same goes with the wheelbase. It's been stretched about 14 inches, but that's how you get this pretty good size bed back here. Now, it's a little bit bigger than the short box you can get with the Toyota Tacoma or the Ford Ranger. And something else cool here, you can fit a sheet of plywood between those wheel wells, which isn't something you can usually do with a conventional mid-size truck. And there's a whole bunch of other truck stuff back here, like these tie downs, cargo lights, this little storage cubby, you can even get a 400 watt outlet back there. But here's where the ridge line really starts to separate itself from the rest of the mid-size pack. Don't forget this thing is unibody, not body on frame. So Honda decided to throw in a trunk. It's like 200 liters and it's got some weather stripping. It's not totally waterproof, but it is pretty close. And there's a drain plug in there just in case. But that also means you can load this thing up with ice and your favorite beverage for that next tailgate party, which is awesome. Now, if you're tailgating, there's also these speakers you can get in here that Honda calls exciters. That's pretty hilarious to me, but either way, it's like the Wizard of Oz. You can't actually see them, but it turns the whole bed into a sound system. It is awesome. I love that. So let's say you're out at the game enjoying a tailgate and you go to reach for your next beverage. Well, you don't have to stretch all the way across this tailgate because it's got a handle here and it swings out like a barn door. I mean, it doesn't get much cooler than that. Now those speakers in the bed and the power outlet, they only come in the touring trim and this black edition I'm driving, but there's lots of good stuff that does come standard, including stuff in the back, those tie downs, cargo lights. You also get that trunk and the dual opening tailgate in the cheapest version of the Ridgeline. And there's a bunch of other good stuff too. You get a power sunroof and power sliding rear window, as well as tri-zone automatic climate control, heated mirror, steering wheel and seats, a decent stereo, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, a wireless charger, and there's a whole bunch of advanced safety features. So you get forward collision warning with auto braking, as well as blind spot monitoring with rear cross traffic alert, lane departure warning and lane keep assist and adaptive cruise control. And most of it works really well, though there is a familiar Honda complaint here. The forward collision warning system is very sensitive and it's not just around town. I got stuck in some pretty heavy stop and go traffic on my way to this shoot this morning. There was a transport truck in front of me and I wasn't that close to him. I was just keeping up with what he was doing. And every time he let off the brakes, this thing would beep and flash at me. That is just no good. Now, like I said, it's something that I complain about a lot with Honda products and you can turn it off pretty easily with this button down here, but then that defeats the purpose of having forward collision warning to begin with. But all of that stuff is nice and it also makes the 46 grand or so that Honda wants for the cheapest version of the Ridgeline just a little easier to stomach because that is quite expensive. 
If you move up to the EXL trim, you're gonna pay about five grand more and it gets you stuff like front and rear parking sensors as well as memory settings for the mirrors and driver's seat, leather upholstery, heated rear seats, satellite radio, it's a decent list. And then the touring trim is gonna set you back 55,500 bucks, but you get stuff like ventilated front seats, a more powerful stereo, those speakers in the back, as well as built-in navigation. There is a lot of extra, and that power outlet in the bed, don't forget. That is a lot of money, and then so is this black edition, because it builds on that touring trim, but it's about 2,000 bucks more to get all this stuff blacked out. Now the reality is that does make this more expensive than that Ford Ranger Tremor I drove earlier this year, but they are completely different trucks. For starters, you're definitely not going four-wheeling in your Honda Ridgeline. And then this thing's only rated to pull 5,000 pounds compared to the 7,500 that that thing's rated for. But again, this is where that whole realist thing enters the conversation again. Because if you're not pulling that much or that often, there is more of what matters here. That is the key takeaway. There's more space inside. There's more to it than just a bed bolted to the back and it's more comfortable. Yeah, there's some of that rigidity you get in a more conventional mid-size truck, but there's also a nice pliability and it's very easy to drive. It's a lot more like piloting an SUV than it is a pickup truck. I really dig that. And then don't forget about all those amenities you can get too. Heated and ventilated front seats, heated rear seats. There's even rear climate controls. All that stuff is very hard to come by in a mid-sized truck. And they also mean it's that much better for family life. And the same goes with the trunk in the back. Those are all the reasons I like this truck so much. To recap, I like the extras you get with the Honda Ridgeline, like the trunk in the back and the two-way tailgate, how smooth and comfortable it is, and how spacious it is compared to most mid-sized trucks. I don't like that it's pricey, that there isn't a ton of front seat legroom, or that there's quite a bit of tire noise, even though it has active noise cancellation. If you consider yourself a traditional truck person, you've probably already dismissed the Honda Ridgeline as not enough truck for you. But if you can look at it realistically, I'd be willing to bet it absolutely is. My biggest hang up is probably the price, but if you can get past the sticker shock, it's a comfortable and spacious ride with the right kind of capability when it's time to do truck stuff.